Hi, I'm Mark Needham with StarTrain. In this video, we're going to learn about the timestamp index that was added in Apache Pinot 0 0.11. Okay, so we're going to be demonstrating this feature with the Chicago Crimes dataset, which is a open dataset that contains about 7 million crimes starting from 2001 until now. And we've got it loaded into Pinot already, so let's navigate over to the table page and we'll have a look at the schema. And so what you can see here is we've got info about the crime, so indicating the type of crime, whether there was an arrest, whether it was domestic related. We've then got, if we scroll down a little bit, uh, where the crime happened, we've got the, la the long, the ward, the district, the block, and the beat. And then we've also got a timestamp indicating when it happened. So if we now go over to the query console and we click on the crimes table, we can see like it shows some of those crimes. So we can see actually there are about 7.6 million. So it's a bit more than what I said. And now let's write our own query. And this is a very similar query to what people are writing where we try and find the crimes per week starting from the 16th of January, 2017 and kind of aggregating how many crimes happen per week. And if we run that query, uh, we can see if we scroll down, we can see each a week and then the number of crimes that happened in that week. And if we run it a few times, we can see the time is roughly 135, 140 milliseconds. Now let's go to the table config and we're going to update this with a new index. So if we paste in our new table config, so you can see the extra bit is we've got a field config list and in there we specify the name of the timestamp column. So in this case, we're saying date, epoch, and then the most important other bit is the granularity. So this is saying which granularities do you want to index? So we're saying when, whenever I'm calling date trunk with day or week or month, those are the ones that I want to, to index. And so if we now save that config and what we need to do next, we need to make sure we reload the segment. So in this case, there's only one, but if you had more, you need to reload all of them so that it'll pick up this new index. And now if we go back to our query again and run it again. Let's run it a few more times. And this time the, the queries are running in like kind of 40 milliseconds, sort of low 40 milliseconds. We've got like a three to four time improvement. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so you might be wondering, how does this actually work? So let's go back to the table page again. And this time let's click on the segment. And if we navigate down uh, the page and we can see at the bottom, we've got the indexes section. And if we type into that search box, date epoch, uh, then we can see like there's a list of new fields. So we've got a dollar date epoch day, week, and month. And so each of those are like derived columns that have been added in and a range index you can see has been applied to each of those. And so whenever you run a query that contains date trunk, the Pinot query planner is replacing the date trunk with those fields. So it's actually not really using date trunk anymore. It's using those field values instead. Uh, and there's actually more detail with a worked example explaining how, how exactly this happens uh, in the blog post, which we'll include in the description below. Uh, and so that's the end of this video in which we've learned how to use the timestamp index. Give it a try on your own data and let us know how you get on. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.